Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you like making money, uh, subscribe to the channel. I talk a lot about undervalued commodities, undervalued financial assets. Uh, this is a financial education channel. So if that interests you, obviously subscribe. I'm gonna talk about commodity prices today. We're gonna go through, knock out a whole bunch of different commodities to see what patterns they're setting up uh, over the long term. We're talking beef, poultry, uh, all the metals, precious metals, everything, uranium. Let's look at everything just to give us a, a picture. Uh, and I'll start out with the CRB index. So let's jump into the presentation. This is about commodity prices. So let's see what them commodity prices are doing. We're going to chart the prices and see the patterns. Again, keep in the forefront of your mind. Bigger, longer patterns mean bigger moves. Uh, these moves are not going to be quick they're not going to manifest themselves in days or months <clears throat> these are big long-term patterns uh, which means that they are structural in nature demographic demographic driven uh, inflation driven uh, and and these could last 10 15 20 years uh, in length so let's take a look this is the crb index we've been in this slight downward uh channel here consolidating up in this pennant formation all the way back i would say uh, it started in 2008 the last commodity bull market uh, is where it ended in 08 and here we are in 2021 and any which way i draw these lines in here we're breaking out to the upside this is going to have dramatic consequences uh, for people's lives uh, it's going to be inflationary that's what i think it's demographic driven uh, it is originated from real estate and again, this doesn't mean that that this is just going to go straight up. What it means is that we broke the psychological containment and that eventually this is going to work its way higher uh, over the years. Much like it did if you were to go back into the 90s here, uh, we had a, a buy signal of, of commodities against stocks in 1998 is when it threw its signal somewhere back in this range in here. And if you had held on, you can see that we went through a couple of, of pullbacks here. What I'm saying is that the, the, the trend has been, it was broke back here. We are coming on up, and if you held through this entire phase, you went from a hun under 100, this is down around maybe 50, 50 all the way to 450. Massive move to the upside. What I'm saying is that is going to happen again. The CRB index is going to have a big run to the upside from inflation we're going to see a weaker dollar and this is this is what it's it's signaling right now this doesn't mean it's going to go straight up it doesn't mean we're going to hit 250 uh in a month it could i'm not saying it can't but uh what i'm saying is the the momentum is going to be going to the upside for for a decade or more here's platinum uh i like i like platinum platinum is an excellent metal on a ratio basis i also uh, do lots of ratio analysis. Uh, ratios tell us relative value from an asset to an asset. Uh, platinum is absolutely excellent in terms of valuations against other metals and other assets. If you look from 1970, this would have been a really good time to buy in, back here. Uh, and then it's just been walk, stair stepping up. And what I think is going to happen is we came down here. This is the below, below the cost of the low cost producers. I think there's a possibility, depending on how platinum's used for emissions in internal combustion engine cars and also in fuel cells and a, and a myriad of a whole bunch of other different uh, uses platinum's in for industrial purposes. I think it's possible that we could hit the top of this, this channel up here uh, in the future. That's probably $4,000, $5,000 sometime 10 years down the line. But right now it is extremely undervalued. We broke out of this downtrend pattern coming through here. It broke up to the upside and it's gonna have it, the path of least resistance is going to be higher in, in my opinion. Here's sugar. Sugar, we're still putting in a massive pattern. Uh, it is consolidated. It's still um, compressing on up a little bit, but these things, sugar likes to spike very quickly as you can see in history. So that one's in its pattern. Uranium is amazing. Uh, this is one of the most leveraged commodities that I know of. Uh, you can see this thing absolutely moonshot 
in the mid 2000s and then you have the slow leak off of sellers and this looks fantastic down here i mean absolutely fantastic from a charting perspective it broke this little downtrend here we're coming on up we're making higher lows all the way through here we're making higher highs it's behaving quite well it is uh, somewhat slow and moving at the moment, but I have a feeling this thing's going to snap and eventually it's going to move uh, quite quickly up. So this isn't one to be trading in and out of. Uh, if, if we're looking at uranium mining companies, this is one to just sit on and hold because the valuations and the, as the asymmetric bet that we can make here is massive, just absolutely massive. Zinc, zinc's looking fantastic. We're carving out this compression in here bouncing back and forth, uh, and I'm looking for a break at some point uh, in the future. Tin, tin already broke out of its pattern. Uh, it's looking fantastic. This was the last bull market, absolute moonshot through here. Now this would have been a very hard one to, to hold on through and, and ride it all the way to the top. That's why we're looking at ratios. That's why we're looking at the side mirrors, looking at all the other sectors alongside of us to see what they're doing. Is zinc, iron ore, copper, platinum, gold, are all those coming up with us? Because if we have a pullback here and all the rest are continuing to move up, I would say this probably has a good likelihood of continuing to move up. But this would have been a very difficult hold uh, after uh, after this, right? This move right there. I probably would have been a big seller right here. But we're, we, we broke out recently. We're moving to the upside. Momentum's to the upside. The path of least resistance is higher. So this one's looking fantastic to go along it. Uh, the, the tin mining companies. This is lumber. Lumber just, oh, look at this pattern here. All the way back. Uh, this is a 20 year pattern here. Broke to the upside. See ya. Wouldn't want to be a gone. It is gone. Now let's look at, I'm going to look at this and zoom in on this side here. This is lumber. Look at this. We, we've got this, this, this guy. Okay. So it broke to the upside and then pulled back, created this pattern and it's turtle heading up uh, above it. I'm, Curious to see which way this thing breaks. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, lumber prices are expensive. They're going to come down. Uh, my answer is, well, what if it doesn't? What if it doubles or triples from here? I don't I don't have the answer, uh, but if this thing breaks to the upside, uh, this is a pretty pretty big pattern. It could do another double or triple. I, I, I'm curious to see. I'm not claiming that's what's going to happen. I'm just curious to see what does happen if this thing breaks to the upside, because right now I'm seeing a little bit of a breakout. Uh, is this if it doesn't reverse here quickly and it it jumps you know a lot higher from here uh and and remember we we are in an inflationary environment and in an inflationary environment if all these things are going up uh, if you look at a lot of the charts they're quite vertical uh we could be entering a phase where inflation is is quite great so i i don't know if this is going to just come back down uh everything else is going up so i i, I would say that most likely path of least resistance is higher not lower Here's steel rebar, that thing is launched. Um, this was the, the nice launching pad, we'll call it the alligator mouth. Uh, it is closed, it came out top, back tested, and then launched higher like it was jumping off a springboard. So steel look good, looks good. Lead still in its sideways pattern. Uh, it doesn't wanna partake yet, but it probably will at some point. Uh, here's aluminum, aluminum turtle heading too. Peeking its turtle head out saying, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I want to do a launch pad, too. So it's probably going to come up, maybe do a little bit of a back test or come down, and then boom, gone. Uh, here's nickel. Nickel, I, I kind of drew it a little bit different than I normally did in past months. Uh, we've got a nice little expanding megaphone pattern in here. Uh, I have every reason to think this is going to break to the upside, given nickel's used in batteries for electric vehicles. Uh, I'm very heavily invested in, in nickel, and I think it's going to absolutely launch when it gets past here. So just be patient, uh, get your companies that you like, and then just hold on. I mean, that's that's what I think. Uh, here's iron ore. Iron ore. Look at this thing. Okay, we've got, a, we've got a 2008 high. We draw this pattern in. It broke to the upside and is back testing right now. This is where a company like VALE... Uh, uh, BHP, Rio, Tinto, like these big guys that, that produce some iron, uh, they're diversified miners. These companies will do excellent, I think. Uh, and I think our iron ore is just sitting there ready to just absolutely explode higher. And this is what I think goes in. I think they make, uh, the bases of the big wind, um, the big wind, uh, turbines 
Uh, I think their, their bases are made out of iron, I think. Cobalt. Cobalt's getting getting freaky with it here. Nice big move up from 3,500 to five grand in a nanosecond. <laughs> this thing moves quite quickly. It's encountering some resistant sellers through this area in here. As you can see, there's a lot of buyers and sellers in this area, which provides resistance to the way up. So it pulled back a little bit, just hit its head on it. It's probably gonna turn and come back up because you know we've got trillions of dollars flowing into electric vehicle renewables, all those things. Copper, look at this, look at this monster pattern here. 2004 was the entrance point and we're exiting in 2020, vertical. Uh, looks like we just got a clear 450 and this thing, it's, it's gonna be a Usain Bolt or something. It's gonna be running, cheetah speed. Now here's palladium, palladium, my Lord. Oh my goodness, 85 up in this megaphone pattern, broke to the upside, back tested, gone. <laughs> It's this is going to drag platinum higher. Platinum's a substitute for palladium. If palladium gets to three, four, five grand, whatever it goes to, uh, it will drag platinum up with it. Rhodium. So this is platinum. This is the big launch here. Rhodium did a launch here, broke out of its pattern and just went vertical. Is it done? I don't know. Uh, there's a lot. There's still a large deficit out till 2025 or and past that. <clears throat> so I don't. I don't think it's. It may not be done yet. I don't, I, I don't know where demand gets killed. So what price? I don't know. But this thing is is done very well. Uh, poultry. Poultry is bouncing its head against its top wedge pattern. So it's it's up there. It's making some good gains. Uh, gold. So gold has done an absolute fantastic job from 2000. Big move higher all the way to 2011. <clears throat> now we're putting in a cup and handle pattern. Uh, it's going to take some time. Just be patient, everybody. I know gold is amazing. I, I agree with that. This will go higher. Just give it time. Uh, all the conditions, market conditions are in place. The valuation is great. And the supply demand balance uh, looking forward is very favorable for gold to go higher. Lithium carbonate came down, entered a dead period right here. See where it went dead. And then boom, here we go. This is going. So lithium's looking good. Uh, silver's looking fantastic. Nice, good impulse move higher. We came out, entered a, a dead period right in this period here. Popped up, popped back. False breakout downward somewhat, and then launched higher. And this thing I think is going to end up, I don't know, probably past this area easily. So far higher is my guess. Uh, soybean. Soybeans, the launch right here, some sort of springboard launch here. Uh, but it looks like in history, it's been quite vertical in nature. So soybeans is looking good. Natural gas is hanging out uh, down low. How low can you go? Uh, but if it, if it pauses here and we get a, the summer, it may go kind of sideways, chop like this. And then, and then maybe we'll head on up and break out of this pattern here. Because uh, we know inflation is going to be probably quite rapid. We'll see. Here's crude oil. Crude oil broke its first downtrend here. That's the first one it broke. It's kind of pausing because it took a lot of energy to get through this downtrend break. It'll maybe go sideways, and then I want to see this thing break this bigger guy up here. After about $70 maybe, we break 70 I think it's clear. and it, It's a clear break to the upside, and we're going to see a big move, just like this was last, last bull market as it just launched higher. <clears throat> Here's beef. Uh, beef is going vertical. Uh, it's, you know, I believe Top Gun said something like we're going vertical here or something. The goose, uh, this is going vertical. So beef is way up there. So overall, uh, what, what do I see in these charts? I see massive strength. I see uh, lots of opportunities. I see decade plus long moves coming in front of us. So what I like to do is I position. I find my, my good companies. I like the companies I like. Uh, I, I look at them and say, yes, they're correlated to these prices. Yes, they're going to move higher with these prices. And then I invest and I sit in them. And the most important part here is to do nothing. Get your strategy right in the beginning. Your strategy should be, I want X here, Y here, Z here in these different uh, sectors. You get your money invested and you literally do nothing. <laughs> and the money and the account... Uh, over time, will go up. 
Uh, does it mean that the ride will be easy? No, I never said that. I never said the ride will be easy. We're gonna, you're going to go up, you're going to go down, you're going to see your account get flung all around. Uh, that is completely normal. It's going to be volatile, but in order to get these outsized returns, you're going to have to stomach some volatility. That's just the way it is. If you guys don't like as much volatility, get into more diversified mining companies that have a bunch of different things that they mine, like a BHP, NILSY, SCCO, uh, RIO, RIO, <clears throat> uh, VALE, uh, SOUHY. All those companies are, are, are quite big, diversified in nature, and they dampen a little bit. They'll still be a little bit volatile. Uh, but you're going to have to hold on to those things, write them up. They pay great dividends as well uh, as you go up. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. <clears throat> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I appreciate you guys listening. This is Finding Value.